Hank, you chased a story to Manilow King and some homes that are not quite the same as they were before Sandy. What yeah, do you got? Yeah, well, Manilow King and Manilow King Shores, Bill, nearly two years post Sandy, Lynn Schaefer's Manilow King Shores home on Dory Lane, standing tall and looking good, elevated, flood resistant. This is this says everything about about yes. the house now. We are yes. If the water comes through again, we're lucky because it will just take down whatever's here. Everything is elevated here. Lynn's house looks like the model Sandy recovery story, but it's one she paid dearly for. The Schaefer's spent nearly a half a million dollars over and above their insurance settlement just to get back home. And most of that out of their retirement savings. Most of the neighbors, she says, Bill, haven't been nearly as lucky. If you look in the window, you probably could, and it's all it's all gutted. Right. And if you look around a lot of the a lot of the houses in here, you walk down the street, you'll see gutted, 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 gutted. I, I, I'm guessing there's maybe 10% of people in, if that. Now a walk around the neighborhood bears that out. Deck chairs strewn all around on porches, seawalls on the verge of collapse, of gutted interiors. A quarter mile up Route 35 in Manilowking proper, you had a similar situation. So we had 521 homes within the borough. Every single person suffered some varying degree of damage. Every water, single one. Every single one from water being completely knocked off and landing in the back. Stacy Ferris, who runs emergency management in the borough, says, of course, personal finances do weigh into recovery, uh, but there are other factors. A lot of people are waiting for the beach replenishment programs to get on their way. Like we said here in July, we're going to be starting with steel and then the Army Corps project. They don't want to rebuild until the, the yeah, dunes higher. Yeah, why would you? I understand. We're in hurricane season. There's nothing open up there to offer any protection right now. So, Bill, I guess the takeaway is when you go to the shore this summer, show a little patience because there's a lot going on. And every single house you see, whether it's fully rebuilt or untouched since the storm, has a story and people's lives behind it. I got to say, Hank, it's good to hear, though, the sensibility. I mean, you feel for people that can't get back into their homes because it's just government takes so long to get something done. But also, I, I think it's important to put this in context of there are really two different roles of the government. One is to rebuild the seawalls and try to prevent the water from coming into the town. And the other other is to support the individual homeowners, and we could have that argument all day as to whether or not the U.S. government or the state government should be involved in flood insurance. But I think what the Army Corps of Engineers is doing, it's important work. It has to be done, and uh, unfortunately, it's taken longer than people would and like. And that's a factor I hadn't considered when I went into it, is that maybe an unworked-upon house might just be down to that person not doing their work, not recovering the way they're supposed to. Maybe they're waiting because, as she said, it is hurricane season. You don't want to rebuild your house just to have it knocked down again a month later. What would that do to your soul?